Speaking of getting booked, this podcast is about one thing, getting booked to speak more. Whether you are an established speaker or a newbie, we want to see your career take off. Hundreds of speakers are hired every single day. And you are next. Let's jump in with your host, Matt Browning. Hey, it's Matt Browning. Welcome to season two of Speaking of Getting Booked. This is the podcast all about you as the speaker. I interview top meeting planners, seminar promoters, chapter presidents, association chairs, anyone who runs live events and they book speakers on their stages. We interview those people and find out the nitty gritty about what it takes for you as a speaker to get booked. So jump in, get ready for season two. If you haven't already, go back into season one. Uh, you know, we have some amazing, amazing interviews back then. Um, man, we had some people talking about getting booked at fairs, getting booked into schools, corporate events, conferences, uh, seminars. We had a couple different National Speaker Association uh, club presidents for different uh, states and chapters, all about what they look for in their speakers coming up. This season, we have an amazing, amazing lineup coming up for you. Um, we're going to hear from people like RV Robinson, uh, veteran speaker trainer and dear friend of mine that has put on a gazillion different events over the several years in California, and I've spoken on her stage many times. We have Eric Bailey in Utah, who is one of the premier sales from stage platform trainers. Adam Shable, good friend, who's a top podcaster and has, of course, been speaking as well. He runs fitness boot camps and has membership groups. We have Julie May, who I've been on her stage so many times. She's had, uh, we, we, we share the stage with Kirk Cameron when I launched my book a couple years back. That was awesome. That was a Julie event that she put on. And every year she puts on amazing conferences with phenomenal celebrity guests. And she's looking for speakers just like you. Uh, and then we have many, many more coming in season two so be on the lookout for that here's what you need to do make sure you quickly resubscribe if you haven't subscribed lately subscribe to speaking of getting booked and then hey leave a rating review you can do that but make sure you subscribe wherever you get podcasts if it's on apple if you're listening to this right now on apple on google spotify whatever it is add it to your playlist put it on your alexa but make sure you subscribe so you get notifications Every single week, we're going to drop a new episode in season two of me interviewing a phenomenal promoter who's going to get you booked on stage. I will be throwing out some extra teaching episodes coming up as well. Um, be on the lookout for those uh, where I'll be teaching from Jen and uh, Jen's my business partner in 10x Advantage speaking training. Uh, Jen and I teach this eight pillar method. So watch out that we're going to throw some bonus trainings in here on the podcast. Totally free, always for you. Season one's free. Season two's free. There's no paywall. There's no Patreon. You don't need to tip us. This is just me giving you value because I actually care and I want you to succeed. That's what speaking and getting booked is all about. Hey, speaking of getting booked, have you been getting booked? Well, if you haven't, uh, make sure you listen to the show. Make sure you follow up and do some of the homework. Listen to uh, connect with the guests, you know, when they when we finish interviewing. Send the guests DMs. They love that stuff. They really like these are people that are in our speaking industry, you know, and there are people who love networking like me and you. They love new opportunity. But please don't send them a DM saying, hey, um, I want to get booked on your platform. You know, let me know. Because there's no way to reply to that, right? So in this first episode, I'm just going to quickly talk a couple minutes about how to reach out cold to somebody. You know, the thing that, that's been getting to me a lot lately is I've been getting a lot of pitches for the my other podcast, The Driven Entrepreneur. And of course, if you're not listening to Driven Entrepreneur, where have you been? Listen to the Driven Entrepreneur. It's usually somewhere in the top uh, 30 of all entrepreneur podcasts on Apple, which is a pretty cool deal. I'm super stoked on that. In fact, I'm going to pull up a photo real quick. Uh, you won't be able to see the photo, but I took this somewhat recently. Uh, where was it? In the Here we go. This is so cool. In the charts. Maybe I'll put this up on my Instagram, at Matt Brawny, and check this out, though. Um, in entrepreneurship in America, number 31 in the charts. So overall, all the entrepreneur podcast number 31 was Dean Graziosi, the guy who's the infomercial king, been partnering with Tony Robbins, running huge, huge events. Number 32, yours truly, Matt Browning, the driven entrepreneur. And the number 33, get this, Russell Brunson, the marketing secret show. Russell Brunson, 
the founder of ClickFunnels, makes a gazillion dollars a month, uh, is one of the top marketers in the entire world, also partnering with Dean and Tony. And somehow I got sandwiched between the two. So it's a, uh, a Dean and Russell sandwich where I'm the meat. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll put that up on my Instagram so you can see it at Matt Browning. Um, at, at any rate, make sure you listen to The Driven Entrepreneur. But hey, let's talk about cold emails and reaching out, shall we? This is a big deal. Um, you never, ever, ever want to reach out to a promoter by asking for something. It's a pretty simple concept. It's you give first and you ask second. So I so think about what do you have to offer? And you might think, Matt, I don't have anything to offer. I just want to speak on their stage. You have something. Look at your social media. You know, if you have 5,000 friends on social media, and if you don't, by the way, go get it. Like start approving friends and start taking the suggestions from Facebook and adding it on. Why? Because it's not really a friends list. That's what it was in, you know, 2009. Nowadays, it's not a friends list. It's a marketing list. It's a list of people who potentially, if you put a post up, if you talk about your business or a story or a new book coming out or something, it's possible that instead of trying to email where they're bouncing and people aren't getting them, they're just going to see it in their newsfeed. So get more friends. I think that's a, a really important thing to do. But my point is, say, you know, I have 4,996 friends on Facebook. Even if I don't run an event, even if I didn't have a podcast, even if I have no platform, if I reached out to a promoter and said, hey, I love what you're doing, or I really enjoy your event, and you should know about their event, and don't BS it, you know, people can smell that. So tell them legitimately if you've been researching about their event and you think it's pretty cool. Again, it can be nowadays, it's virtual or it's a live in person, doesn't matter. It's the same strategy. People are pretty much doing the same type of content and they all want help promoting. So here's what I would say. Reach out to the person and say, hey, I saw you were doing this event. I think it's so cool. I think it's so timely and I'd love to support you. I don't have a big email list, but I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and I'd love to do a quick Facebook Live with you at some point to talk about some tips and strategies and to plug your event. Or if you have a big Instagram following, same thing and plug the Instagram. Or if you have an email list, do you get what I mean? Like it could be social, it could be email. Uh, if you have a podcast like I do, right? Like I could reach out to someone like with this show. And, and this is what I did for most of the people that I've spoken on their stage. Everyone who's been on this podcast as a guest previously, pretty much I've either spoken on stage or they said yes, that they'd like to book me on stage. But do you know how that happened? Here's a secret. Shh, tell anyone. This is just for you. But if you share this episode and this podcast with a friend of yours one-on-one, -on -one, that's the best way to get this message out. These amazing guests and this great free information, just share it with one friend. Here's the idea. When I reached out to the seminar promoter first, I didn't say, hey, can I speak at your conference? Hey, can I speak at your next chapter meeting with 82 entrepreneurs who are my ideal target market for my programs, products, and services? I didn't say that. You know what I said? I said, hey, I got introduced to you or I saw what you were doing. I love your concept with this seminar. I was wondering if you'd like to come on my podcast and talk about your event. I have a show called Speaking and Getting Booked and I help speakers learn how to get booked at events like yours. Maybe we can talk about your event and what you look for in speakers and talk about the industry. You know what's funny? Nobody says no. People love it. Why? I'm giving, right? I'm giving first. I'm saying, let me plug you. Let me give you value, right? Let me share something. Let me share my audience with you. And from there, it's not even a, a one-two. I don't say, uh, come on my show and can I speak at your event? Even that feels, what's the word? It's transactional. You know, it's a little bit transactional, right? When you go, hey, here's what, you know, you, I'll rub your back, you rub mine. I, I don't like that. I'm not in for that. Now, I do think it's okay to be intentional. Hey, my intention, I can't have everyone on my show and I can't reach out to a million people one-on-one. -on -one, so I want to be selective and intentional. I'm going to find people that run events, the kind of events that I would like to speak at. And then I'm going to reach out, connect and offer them value. I'm going to say, Can, would you like to come speak on my podcast? Would you like to come and do a, a social media, Instagram, Facebook Live, a TikTok with me? 
I'd love to do that. Now we're on Clubhouse. Uh, and if you're not on Clubhouse, man, get on Clubhouse. Um, you say, hey, I'm going to run a room in Clubhouse about this as the audio only app. Do you want to come on Clubhouse with me and we can run this together and you be on a panel, I'll make you a moderator, right? So this is the, the idea is I'm going to put them on some kind of a platform. And you know what's funny too? You would be shocked at how few followers you really need to make an impact. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you might be thinking in your head, oh, I need an email list of 50,000 or I need 200,000 on Instagram. You don't. Like if you have 2,500 followers on Instagram, or again, I said, you know, three, four, 5,000 friends and you go live, you're going to get a handful of people coming on. You can, of course, add to that by putting a post saying, I'm going to go live interviewing this awesome person on Facebook tomorrow at 4 p.m. You know, put the, the time zone, Eastern time, Pacific time, whatever. And, you know, that's going to help to get engagement up a little bit. But just offering that and then, you know, the post views. People want exposure and if they're in business and, you know, they already network, they run events, there's going to be no shortage of, of desire for exposure. Especially, again, Remember, especially when you reach out and the first thing you say is, hey, I love what you're doing with this event. I'd love to talk to you about helping to promote it. I have a podcast. I have a social following. I have an email list. I have an idea. What if we, you know, I'd love to record a conversation. I'll share that on my YouTube channel. You get the idea? Okay, I hope you get the idea. I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't want to keep beating the drum on this, um, but I want to make sure you really get it, you know, that you have something of value to offer them. You have a platform, whether you think you do or not. So if you haven't done this already, here's a great quick, uh, and you should have this anyway, but if you don't, write this all down. And you could even pause real quick and just jot it down. It's really good to know this. Get all of your following numbers in one place. I do this when I'm asking for sponsors for the podcast because you know, or trying to get a prominent guest. Um, I just got a, a really prominent guest booked for uh, the Driven Entrepreneur coming up and super excited about the interview we're doing. But you know, he's a well-known, pretty big name. And you know, not very often do people say, Well, give me all your numbers, but this particular, you know, their their PR company said, Well, what are your your numbers? And they ask for everything. Well, what's funny is my download numbers, like specifically how many downloads per episode on my podcast hosting site aren't amazing. Like they're not bad, but they're not, you know, Lewis Howes, 300 million downloads or John Lee Dumas or whatever, right? They're not these big podcast numbers. But what I replied back with was all of my real numbers. I said, well, um, I get this many on on-demand downloads. And then I get this many, which is a huge number, on stream listens through our AM FM uh, station partners. And I have 5,000 Facebook friends, and I have 7,500 Facebook page followers, and I have 14,000 whatever Instagram followers, and I have 2,700 YouTube. And so what I said is basically, hey, here is all of the reach that I have. And I didn't even include my email list. But the point is, start to grab resources from all the available spots that you have. And you might find you have a more valuable network and a more valuable following than you thought you did. Take that value, take that and whatever the biggest one is, if you're biggest on Instagram or YouTube or, or email or whatever, use that first and then go to these meeting planners, go to the seminar leaders, the chapter presidents, go to the association chairs, go to the virtual event people, the virtual summit people. And, and even if they say, you know, this is what we need from you, start with something else. Say, hey, let me interview you. Let me have you come on my platform, whatever it is. Step two is connect with them. Make a real relationship. I really enjoy it. That's why I like having them on the podcast, you know, because then I can interview them. 45 minutes, 50 minutes later, it's like, hey, we had a really good conversation. We kind of feel like we've gotten to know each other, like a first date, first cup of coffee. What do I do next? Hey, well, let's continue this. And maybe we either, A, book another call. And hey, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, your event and some things I have coming up. And maybe we can connect and see how we can support each other. Boom. Schedule a call for a week or two later. Or right on the, on the bat, you can do that right on the day, too. But in the second call, if you schedule it that way, then you talk about, well, tell me a little more about the event. This was really amazing. Remember our interview? Um, and listen, I don't know if you already have all your, all your speakers booked, but I'd love to throw my hat in the ring. That's a, a sentence I use a lot that you can definitely borrow. I say, I don't know if you already have all your speakers booked, but I'd love to throw my hat in the ring. 
And then, you know, 10 times out of 10, they go, oh, yeah, totally. That would be great. Let's talk. And look, not every stage works out. Some stages, they go, well, I have sponsor spots available for 15 grand. And you go, well, okay, that's either in your budget or it's not. Um, but very often, they go, yeah, that, that would be great. Let's get you in. Or I've had uh, chapters where they do one event every month. I've had chapter uh, presidents say, shoot, well, I already have the calendars done through December. Maybe this is, you know, May. But, you know, I have January next year open. And I go, hey, I'm open then. Perfect. And all of a sudden, I'm already the January speaker for their event seven months, eight months down the road. Uh, so don't be discouraged. Get excited. But definitely the, the takeaway for this episode is reach out. Don't be weird. Don't be greedy. Don't be asky and grabby, right? Nobody likes grabby hands. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I tickle me. Uh, because it does tickle, right? When you reach out and grab. Nobody wants that. Ugh, no. Don't do it. Reach out nicely. Compliment them authentically. Tell them about the event that you already researched. Don't make it up. You know, don't, don't make a template where... Uh, just don't do that, right? Reach out authentically and real. Compliment them authentically. Offer to give them value. Hey, what can I do for you? I'd like to get the word out on your event. Maybe you can come on one of my fill-in-the-blank platform and we can do an interview. I could have you speak. We could whatever, you know? Heck, if you have just an email list of, you know, a thousand people, offer to send an email, you know, maybe I could send an email to my list of people and talk a little bit about, you know, your event. And what. And, and here's what you want to do, though. You don't just send an email promoting their event. You ask them, what's like one tip that you're going to share at the event? What's a really powerful thing? And, you know, they give that to you. And then in the email, you say, I just talked to my friend, Julie. She's amazing. And we were talking about this subject. And then she gave me this amazing tip. And then you share about the tip. And you say, and, you know, she shares that and so much more. She's actually doing an event coming up next month. Definitely check it out. Boom, here's a link. Maybe an affiliate link if you, you know, did that with them. But go first, provide value first, then continue your conversation, continue the relationship, get to know the person, and then finally ask, hey, I'd love to throw my hat in the ring as a speaker for this, and maybe it's the next event. Maybe it's this event. But jump in and don't be scared to ask that. But that's the last step. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, yeah, get out there and get on stage. That's all I'm going to say about that. Welcome again to season two of Speaking and Getting Booked. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on your platform. Do it now, like for real. Go back on your phone or your iPad or whatever and go find it. Hit subscribe. Let's see if it's on Apple. I'm just looking at my, my library here. Um, it might even say this. If you're listening to it on your phone, it might say not interested anymore because we're just starting season two. And it'll say you haven't listened to the show in a while, so we stopped downloading episodes. I have that on some of my podcasts that I haven't listened to in a little while. So make sure you click start downloading again, and you will get the next episode automatically downloaded with a little ping. Not, It's helpful. It's helpful. I like it. I wake up in the morning, ping, there's a little ping on my phone, notification that says season two, episode two with RV Robinson, how to get booked at live seminars is available that's what you want to do, my friends, and I will see you down the road, and I'll see you on stage. Okay, bye-bye.